Hi everyone, my name is Tom. Some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram. If you don't, well, I'm a photographer and I also specialize in making videos, but I'm a watch enthusiast first and I just like to talk about watches that speak to me and that is what I do here. If at any point in this video you decide, well, this isn't too bad, you would do me a big favor of hitting that subscribe button and liking this video. Today we're having a closer look at a great dive watch from Glashütte Original, the CQ in Reed Green. If you have seen my previous video on the Pano Reserve, you will have seen that Glashütte produces some amazing timepieces, fine looking dress watches with some amazing complication and finishing. So a dive watch isn't necessarily a model you would associate with the brand. But with this specialist collection, introduced in 2019, they actually tapped into their own rich history and created a reissue of their 1969 Spezimatic. Spezimatic? Spezi. Spezimatic. Well, their 1969 dive watch. Since 2019, the specialist collection has grown quite a bit. The first release stayed very close to the original, but since then some extra color options joined the collection. There are even some precious metal options with the duotone in red gold and stainless steel, or even a full red gold case. And recently a CQ chronograph joined the catalog. The one we're having a closer look at today is the CQ Diver in Reed Green. Like all the watches in this collection, this model is available in either the bracelet, a synthetic strap or a matching color rubber strap. When you purchase a luxury watch and let's get the elephant out of the room, 10k, you expect every part of the watch to be of high standard. My expectations were high and well, this just exceeded them by far. So why am I starting a review with the strap? Well because it shows how much attention Glashütte spends on every part of the watch. This rubber strap is one of the best looking and feeling straps I've handled. It's physically thicker than any I have tried thus far, but it still manages to be more soft than any other. And they didn't just put a simple buckle on it, it has a beautiful and well constructed butterfly deployant clasp. There is a combination of polished and brushed finishing and it has the double G logo engraved on the clasp. So if this sets the benchmark for the rest of the watch, we're in for a treat. This watch is the smaller brother of the Panorama Date. It comes in at 39.5mm, it has a height of 12.5mm, there is a 47mm lug to lug and it features a 20mm lug width. The case is stainless steel and there is a sapphire crystal on top. You will be the fanciest diver in the pond, yes, this is a DIN and ISO standard compliant dive watch, it has a 200m water resistance, it features a ceramic uni-rotational 120 click bezel, there is super luminova on the hands and indices. There is a screw down case back and a screw down crown. Inside we find the automatic in-house 39.11 with a power reserve of 40 hours that features all of the beautiful stuff that we are used to seeing from Glashütte movements. The Glashütte three quarter plate, the swan neck fine adjustment, a skeletonized signed rotor, but unlike its big brother there is no open case back on this one. Open case backs aren't a must for me, especially not on a dive watch. But with all the competition in the dive watch niche on the market and knowing what level of finishing Glashütte offers, if we would just be able to look at the beautiful movement inside, I think that would potentially swing anyone over to get this one over whatever other watch they are contemplating in buying. The case is a traditional skin diver shape. The case is brushed with beveled edges for a more refined feel. The case flanks have vertical brushings. You would think it adds height to the watch visually, but it doesn't. I hadn't seen these vertical brushings on a watch before and I, I think it's kinda cool. The dive bezel is a scratch resistant sapphire, 120 clicks and honestly feels like one of the best bezels I've tried. There is literally zero play on this thing. The reed green dial is interesting. It's nuanced enough indoor and here in the studio lights I'm not even doing it justice 200% and in sunlight it just pops. I recently got to see the Omega Seamaster and the Breitling Super Ocean and well, I prefer this one. There's this really nice matte texture on the dial. The applied Arabic numerals and indices around the dial have rhodium plating and really have a nice 3D effect to them. Under macro, you can see how elegant the finishing is on these applied numerals and indices. The handset stays true to the early models, with a pencil hour hand and a broad arrow minute hand. At 3 o'clock there is a traditional date window. Again, this is different from the big brother that features the big panorama date. Not sure how many layers of coating this box sapphire has, but the legibility is never an issue with this one. And for me personally, the distortion you get around the edges of the dial are part of the attraction that keeps me wanting to look at my wrist. 
Like I mentioned earlier, competition in the dive segment is brutal. So where would I place this watch? Can this be your daily? Absolutely. Can this be considered a beater or adventure watch? I have no doubt whatsoever that this one can take a punch. But it's so good looking. This is one luxurious looking dive watch. You can wear it on a suit, you can wear it on a jeans, I think you can wear it on your family adventures. It's just a do-all watch. So why would I pick this over the more generic 10k popular dive watch that everybody else seems to own or want? Well, exactly because of that hype. And I think this watch is as good, if not the best in the price tier. It has beautiful finishing, an awesome movement, and you will have a more unique watch on your wrist. So back to back class with the videos. And with these two combined, I think you can actually have a great two watch collection. The more dressy Pana Reserve and the daily beater with the CQ. If you can pick one tomorrow, what model would you choose and why? If you are interested to see more videos from Glass Hütte, do let me know in the comments and I can try to get hands on with them. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Spezimatik. Spezimatik. Spezimatik.